Okay, you're given this function right here on the interval from 0 to 2 pi inclusive and asked to find the intervals of concavity and any points of inflection. Okay, so here's a graph of that function, this red curve on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. The green dashed line is the first derivative. And you notice that the first derivative equals 0 right about here. And it looks like there's the horizontal tangent line right there to the graph. The same over here. First derivative is 0 right about there, horizontal tangent line. And the purple graph is the graph of the second derivative. And it looks like it's 0 right about here. And also right about here at 11 pi over 6. And on the next page, we'll take a look at how that tells us about the concavity and points of inflection. By the way, here's a tangent line to the graph. And it looks like the curve is concave downward, at least over to here, which means the tangent lines are above the curve. OK, so first of all, how do we find the first derivative? Well, the derivative of the natural log of anything is 1 over the anything times the derivative of the anything, the chain rule. So that's what this is right here. 1 over the anything times the derivative of the, that anything is cosine of x. Uh, for this problem, we're not really too interested in the first derivative. But the second derivative will tell us about concavity and points of inflection. So we're going to use the quotient rule. Denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. If I remove the parentheses, keeping track of the negative signs, this is what you get. If you factor out the minus sign from each term, here's the key. Sine squared plus cosine squared trig identity is equal to 1. So if we go to the next board and say, how do we, when is the second derivative? This is f double prime right here. When is that equal to 0? Well, it only equals 0 when the numerator is 0. And by the way, the, func the denominator for this second derivative is defined everywhere. This denominator can never equal 0. <coughs> so the second derivative will equal 0 when the numerator equals 0, which occurs when the sine of x is negative 1 half. So x is the angle that has a sine of negative 1 half between 0 and 2 pi. Here's a little unit circle with the reference angle of 30 degrees, which is the same as pi over 6. So it's this angle that had, whoops, this angle that has a uh, sine of negative 1 half, which if you add pi over 6 to 6 pi over 6, you get 7 pi over 6. And if you subtract pi over 6 from 12 pi over 6, you get 11 pi over 6. So those are your critical or hypercritical numbers, uh, the places where the second derivative equals 0. If you put those on a little number line, test for concavity, uh, between 0 and 7 pi over 6, it looks like the sec second derivative is negative, which means the original function is concave downward. And between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, I happen to choose 3 pi over 2. That has a value of 1, which is positive, so concave upward. And to the right of 11 pi over 6, I happen to use 2 pi. We get a negative number, so everywhere on this interval to the right of 11 pi over 6, the curve, the second derivative is negative. Concavity changes, so these are point x coordinates of points of inflection. Okay, and if I share my screen, go to Desmos and move this tangent line. Right now, the, all the tangent lines are above the curve, above the function graph. But once I get to the right of that first point of inflection, the tangent lines are below the curve. And if I keep moving to the right, 
well, by the time I get to here, the tangent lines are above the curve. We're back to concave downward. Uh, there you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post a comment.